Hi everybody. On today's special minis with Peapod, we'll be making large format coffee table books for your 112th scale dollhouse. The first thing you're going to do is get your images offline that you want to use for your book. And you want to make a cover, you want to make the front matter pages, and you want to line up your images side by side. Now, my book is Ball Jointed Boys, and I looked online uh, and collected a, a lot of images and put them together in a Word document. You can use whatever editing software you're comfortable with. Uh, the important thing to remember is to line each image up side by side, which will make it much easier when you put your book together. Uh, I'm using 26 images in this book, but my recommendation for this size is 30 images, and that'll be a 15-page book. Each image is 1.5 inches by 1 inch, and the cover is about 5 millimeters bigger than that. Um, so yeah, you're going to need all of your images and you're going to print them out. Sorry, mine are in black and white, but I don't have a color printer. I'll show you my, my finished colored books at the end. Uh, so yeah, you'll get your images, print them out, and you'll need a pair of scissors, sharp scissors, uh, wide, clear packing tape. You'll need some bulldog clips. I have two, one large, one small. These are very strong clips uh, and they grab very tightly to the paper. So if you have any other very strong clips, you can use those. I also have some recycled paperboard and this is just cut from an uh, old um, spaghetti box that I was gonna throw away. You'll need three types of glue for this project. You need school glue, which is very wet glue, and it's going to be for the book binding because it will open up the fibers of the paper and help them bind together. You need quick dry or tacky glue to actually bind the book to the cover once it's all dry and um, bound together. It's a very secure bond and you need very cheap school glue stick which you will use to bind the actual pages to each other it will uh, it won't uh, warp the pages there so once you have all your supplies it's time to get started you're going to take your images and you're going to neatly cut all of them out and set them aside the one thing I forgot to show you was a white piece of paper that I cut out that you're going to wrap around the book once it's bound. So now you have our, your images cut out, you'll begin to fold them accordion style. Now you can use a bone folder or a Teflon folder to do this, but I simply use my, my fingernails to get the creases nice and sharp and you want that. That's why you see a little bit of black residue on my fingernails. You're just going, going to accordion fold everything and keep your pages in the order that you want them in your book. If you don't care about page order, that's fine. You can do what you want, but I wanted mine in a certain order, so I wanted to keep them that way. You'll take your glue stick and begin to assemble all of the pages, starting with the front matter. You'll just add a little glue and stick the page right next to the page it is adjacent to. So it begins to have like a little starfish or accordion pattern. And you'll see that was six images become three pages. So that's how you get the front and the back image. You'll do that with the next set of images. Glue one image to the image next to it and you'll get a starfish accordion style pattern going. And this is pretty quick work. You'll burnish the pages down and then make sure that there's no glue sticking where it shouldn't. So those 10 images became five pages front and back. You'll do that with the next row. Glue each image to the image next to it. And these next set of 10 pages become five front and back pages. Again, you always check 
to make sure nothing is sticking where it shouldn't and you stack the pages up in the order that they belong. Now you'll do the last set of pages. Once you have all of your pages glued to each other, it's time to bind the book. Just make sure the pages are the, in the order you need them to be in. Press them against a flat, even surface to even out the spine and line everything up nicely. You don't want your spine to be crooked. Then you will take your bulldog clip and put it over the book and you'll pop a thin bead of glue along the spine. Not too much because you don't want any glue to seep down between the pages. If you do that, glue will stick to your image and you will you will probably have, uh, your image will probably be torn on the inside when you open up the book. So be careful. Press the spine very tightly and put a small bead of glue. You just want to bind it. And let this dry completely for about 10 minutes. Now I'm not doing that here for the purpose of this tutorial, but you will let it dry for 10 minutes. After that you will put a thick bead of glue on, spread it out, and let that dry completely. If you want it to dry faster, you can pop it in front of a fan or maybe um, use your heat gun to make it dry a little bit faster. But let it dry completely and while it's drying, you assemble the cover. Now you probably want to find some way to stick this cover down to the table or your board or whatever you're using because once you put the tape the static will make the image want to jump up and it might be a little bit crooked and then you'll have to do it all over again. So I had a speck of dust on the tape this time so to uh, get another piece of tape and the problem I had the second time around was that the image jumped up a bit quickly because of the static so it didn't exactly adhere completely over the image there's a little ridge at the top that didn't get any tape you want to make sure tape goes over the whole thing let me stress that you'll burnish the cover down to bring out the shine of the tape and release any air pockets and then you will cut off the excess tape. Now if you do mess up this tape um, like I did it was sl small enough uh, so that it didn't make a big difference but you don't want to end up using two pieces of tape on your image because you'll see two you'll see a tape seam and that won't look professional. Then you'll want to cut the edges and score the spine. Get a nice straight even crease. Take your paperboard and your glue stick and begin to assemble the cover with these pieces that are going to add some strength and structure. The reason you use the glue stick is because it will give you some uh, leeway to be able to move the cover around and then you can burnish it. If you use tacky glue it will dry too quick and you'll have to start over. But this gives you a little room to play and make micro adjustments so you can get the cover nice and straight. once it's where you need it to be you burnish it down and that will set the glue. Now for the center spine. This is a flat spine. I kind of like my books with flat spines. If you want to do a curved spine at this point you would take a small two, uh, paintbrush and kind of curve it around a bit if you want a curved spine. You'll burnish it down and then you will begin to wrap the edges and get them nice and folded over and crease them. Now
Now once you do this, you may notice that the edges overlap and you'll have to make some micro adjustments on those cuts. Uh, I cut a bit too much off the second time around and a couple of the corners had a little gap. So you want to make sure you do this part nicely. Take your time so that the edges meet like on a 45 degree angle and there's no gap. Then you will put some glue around the edges and stick it down. Now it, this takes a little while if you use the glue stick because uh, it's tacky and it's kind of thick and goopy. If you will be frustrated by that just use the tacky glue which will probably quick set very fast. Um, I don't mind using the glue stick so I used it even though I had to really use a lot of pressure to secure those edges and I had to keep pressing it until the glue set. Once you do that, you want to set the memory of that crease by folding down each side of the cover. Check out your book cover, make sure it looks nice and even, and then set it aside. Now you're two-thirds of the way done and this is the last third. That white piece of paper I've glued it to the book after it's been dried uh, and this part you will secure to your cover so I didn't show it in the interest of time but that white piece of paper I just popped a little bead of glue on the end and on the spine and glued it um, to that to to around I wrapped it around the cover and then you'll put a piece of a, a bead of tacky glue on some scrap paper and you will add that glue make sure your covers right side up to the front part if you mess this part up you'll have to start over but then you can just rip that white page off and add another you will gently and neatly press it back to the spine and then you will let this dry now I haven't let everything dry of course in this tutorial but you will let everything dry first so let this dry for about five minutes before you even attempt to do the back cover you can test the spine at this point to see if the book opens nicely I like to make sure all of my books open nice and flat Once the front cover is dry, you'll add a bead of glue to the back and do the same thing. Take your time and line it up and then press it down gently and back towards the spine, making sure the bulk of the book hits the center spine the way it's supposed to. You will let this dry for five minutes before you start manipulating the pages, unlike what I'm doing now, but I'm doing this for the tutorial. I like to make sure my book is open and you will just let it rest so of course the glue is not completely set here because I didn't wait the full time but you will once you do that you're you're done now if you don't let the glue set what you what may end up happening is you may tear the cover or you may tear some of the pages and you don't want to do that because you'll have to start all over again now I'm using the large bulldog clip to create a crease in the cover if you look at a real hardback covered book you'll notice they have that little dip in the cover and this just adds a little bit of a little bit of realism to it it gives it that extra pop and you'll see when I take the clip off that is just really perfect I really like that extra little detail you can do it or not but I think it's nice. And there you have it. You have a miniature hardcover book. Now here are my books in color and I think they just look so cool. They look so real. They look so believable. Um, I did ball jointed boys and ball jointed girls. So now, so actually I have enough images to do three books. I have about 90 each and I did a little cover back page for the author um, and it says something but I'm not going to read it. So this is the ball jointed boys and really these are just images I pulled offline. Uh, you can do planes, trains, automobiles, 
you can do your own style of coffee table book you can do a cookbook you can do magazines like this um not with the hard cover though but um you know for not for the magazine but for the other ones you can do do, do the hard cover but i mean a book like this in a in a real store would cost about 125 dollars so these would be very upscale very expensive books and for my dollhouse this is exactly the the type of thing she would have on her coffee table because she's very upscale very high-end kind of uh person or doll <laughs> so these will go on her coffee table in her dollhouse once i make her coffee table but i thought these were such beautiful dolls again you can make yours you know what would be so cool though is if you took some of your real photos and you made them miniature and made a book of your real photos and put them in your dollhouse on her coffee table wouldn't that be awesome anyway i hope if you've never done a mini tutorial before uh and you always wanted to try to do something do this it's so easy the only thing it takes is a little bit of time if you do it, please put a link to your video uh, under mine. I'd love to take a look at it and love to, for you to share your creations with everybody else.